loving gracious father yes lord you are a god of wisdom and god of love grant us wisdom to understand your love through the words that we meditate upon in christ's most precious name we pray amen kindly be seated Good evening everyone the topic that we have for today is goodness of creation and uh, it is the ninth sunday before easter uh, the verse the passages that we had in the morning are from genesis from psalm 104 and ephesians and all of these passages can be wrapped up in the gospel reading that we had to, right now um before we begin let's spot these are some of the observations i've had um of what is there around nature around us you might have your own thunder lilies bloom with thunder showers such display of grandeur grandeur just for those small little flowers to bloom the bar headed geese migrate from central asia to south asia for winters every year flying over altitudes between 5500 and 750 meters high and they come to the wetlands of tamil nadu and karnataka the tiny shadows of ants crossing the threshold is breathtaking i have children who find creepy crawlies very cute and right when they were small they always found all these and not the centipedes the ones which are the very creepy ones which come out during winter they find it very cute and very nice and uh, as they grew up they always wanted to get tadpoles to put in the fish tank so they want to see it grow i mean like of course i said no i don't want j- frogs jumping out of my fish tank and they find all weird things very nice they find mouse very soft of course they found a dead one uh they found a dead bat once very soft and my son doesn't like get scared of like picking up a lizard and observing it and uh, and then he'll go gently leave it somewhere and i mean it if you see him sometime you know okay this person might not do it but they are like quite passionate about things which i find like i don't want to go near them anywhere but all of god's creation is beautiful and wonderful and uh, there is goodness in everything that we see all around us and uh, i'll just wrap up those three passages in the first few minutes and then get on to the lord's prayer if you read in genesis 1 the passage that was given to us the sequence of creation is in order like right the hierarchy you know like when we talk about food pyramid and all that all of that is already set in place right from creation and the food chain is set at creation hierarchy is established at creation and in all these god gives man dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over every living thing that moves upon the earth so we have authority the only mighty god who has all the power has entrusted with part of that to each one of us and in psalm 104 verse 1 it says bless the lord o my soul o lord my god thou art very great thou art clothed with honor and majesty and hebrews 1 it says hath in these last days spoken unto us by his son whom he hath appointed heir of all things by whom also he made the worlds upholding all things by the word of his power when he had him by himself purged our sins sat down on the right hand of the hand of the majesty on high if you read psalm 104 you find it very beautiful it talks about all of creation about the seas about how god put a um, margin to the sea so it doesn't cover the earth about how he takes care of the birds the plants the animals of each of them have their they have the time to bloom they have the time to also die and how when god's face shows upon them 
everything turns beautiful but when he turns away it becomes sad and it end comes and the psalmist says i'm going to praise the lord all the days of my life because of all these things of the wonders that he gets to witness every day in his life and in the psalm 104 it's there's a verse which says who makes his angel spirits his ministers a flaming fire it's also there in hebrews 1 verse 7 and if you see that it means he makes all things beautiful for you and me not only does he has he created all of nature for us and given us dominion and authority over it but he also gives us angels and ministering spirits to protect us to be with us to guard us and guide us and to be with us wherever we are and it also is there in hebrews 1 14 and all of creation looks up to god and how does this fit into the lord's prayer all the passages if you see it's like you have some one from genesis ephesians and in psalms we come to today's passage where it's the lord's prayer and just before that verse it says um just before a few verses before that he says uh, do not heap up empty phrases we don't have to tell long prayers we don't have to keep on repeating things to god he makes it very concise and he puts them all in this first few verses that we have given to us what would <coughs> our father mean there are few verses for that it means that he is pre- predestined us into the adoption of children by jesus christ it's our father it's his father whom he is including you and i into that and he is saying our father he that we get the adoption as children of god it's all set even that, there even before we try to understand in words of john or others the word of christ itself tells us that he brings us all together and what does he do he makes known unto us the mystery of his will it's obtained inheritance okay and it also means that if you look at a little way differently uh our father would also mean that the adversaries are not called into that in isaiah chapter 63 verse 19 it says we are thine thou never bearest rule over them they were not called by thy name and so it's not like everyone it was a crowd who was there it's like this chapter is an extension of the sermon on the mount it's not just the fifth chapter it goes on up to the seventh chapter so our father it's like he's including the people who are part of the conversation in saying it's my father and it's becomes our father and where does he dwell he dwells in the heavens and where does he his dawat in heaven look down from heaven and behold from the habitation of thy holiness and of thy glory where is thy zeal and thy strength and i of thy mercy is toward me are they restrained in isaiah 63:15 it says this is where he dwells he lives in the heavens but then he is mindful of each one of us allowing us to be called his children and hallowed be thy name it would be to make holy the word simply means to make holy and for this in isaiah again 75:57:15 it says for this says the high and lofty one that inhabits eternity whose name is holy i dwell on the high and the holy place and therefore he calls each one of us to be holy and without blame before him in love and when we say thy kingdom come what it what it would mean is allowing god's kingship to be allowed in our lives that is we give authority and all everything that we have all our being and everything under his authority and it permeates all our being it's not just in some facets of our life but in all our facets of our life and in our inmost parts but never to be contained in matthew how what is the kingdom of god like when you say kingdom of god to be like let it replicate whatever happens here the kingdom of god is like when we read in matthew it's more like a mustard seed that grows to be the large plant becomes a tree so that birds come and perch in its branches when we say perch it can be for some time or for sometimes longer than the other so 
the kingdom of god is lot you can understand it in a tiny from the mustard seed or you can understand the whole of it from all of creation and how it works and thy will be done when we say thy will be done we always talk about god's will in our lives and we have lot of sermons we listen to a lot of sermons like how we need to understand god's will and all those things um in john 1 verse 12 it says but as many as received him to them gave power to become the sons of god even to them that believe on his name which were born not of blood nor of nor of the will of the flesh in ephesians 1 4 and 5 he says according as he had chosen us in him before the foundation of the world that we should be holy and without blame before him in love having predestined us into the adoption of children by jesus christ to himself and we are created to understand that glory that will of god in our lives yes it also matters to every aspect of our lives but first point is that we are there to praise his glory and that we are receive all his blessings from him and that we have redemption in him that is where the will of lord is fulfilled in our lives and if you read again go back to psalm 104 it says all the creatures looked up to you and <coughs> and his will is done in every creature's lives every creature you now we think only for us it's like if you are if you are a person who loves nature observes you find god's providence and protection on all creatures and all of humanity and all of wherever they are where whichever part of the world from the rising of the sun till the going down god's name is glorified his will is being done and uh, and when we say that give us this day our daily bread first few part no like it's all about god and his kingdom and his will and that is established but then it comes to man's need you no know? give us this day our daily bread and every day we look to god for our daily bread what would daily bread mean it is not just necessarily our food but also everything that we need for the day it may be protection for going out and coming in it may be wisdom to talk rightly and work rightly at our workplaces and for children to do the best things that they can do at school and come back and and this prayer the lord's prayer if you kind of go back the whole thing it says it holds everything for us uh, i would just like to give an illustration like from there's a saint gregory of nyssa who says that when we pray it's like human cooperation with the divine and when we say thy will be done it's more performative and they are not merely a request it performs god is performing things for us and one's own will is drawn into his will and when we pray before labor so every day when we start our day before we begin our day and when we pray it says that sin will not find entrance to the soul and the wiles of the adversary remains futile and this is the protection giving us this day our daily bread would mean that he protects us he completely surrounds us with his presence and he leads us through the day and where is this kingdom at the same time is is there within you and when we come to forgive us our trespasses we find one of those things very difficult for us and we sometimes hold on to grudges and things like that and but we have a very strong verse which in jeremiah 17:1 he says the sin of juda is written with a pen of iron and with the point of a diamond it is graven upon the table of their heart and upon the horns of your altars it's a, like a very strong and a how to say it's more than strong we never accept we can't believe that when someone's sin is written with a diamond nib or something it means it's like two set on stone but god forgives that sin of us and he revives us when we go ask him forgiveness and how much more are we asked to forgive what god whatever sins that we commit and <coughs> and when we say that and forgive us our and lead us not into temptation does god lead us into temptation 
God does not lead us. But we just praying that even that to that point where we are almost led to the point. We don't want to go even up to that point. We are asking God not even take, take us to a point where we might be tempted. But he protects us even before all of that. And he leads us. Like for example, if you read Psalm 23, he says, He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the path of righteousness for his name. That is leading us not into temptation. It's right from the psalmist. Even if you see the verse in Revelation, it says, He showed me a pure river of water of life, clear as crystal, proceeding out of the throne of God and of the Lamb. In the midst of the street of it, and on either side of the river was there a tree of life, which bare twelve manner of fruits, and yielded her fruit every month, and the leaves of the tree were for the healing of the nations. So if we are to say that he leads us not in temptation, it's right from Psalm 23, right up to Revelations, right up to when we go up to live with the King of Kings, it's all fulfilled for us. It's not like a short-term plan, it's a full-term plan for us. Till we go into heaven, he says, a pure river of water of life. So he leads us right on earth for us, and even when we go into heaven, we continue to enjoy those blessings even when we go to heaven. And when we go there, there shall be no curse, and the throne of God is there, and the Lamb shall be in it, his servants shall serve him. We will see his face, his name shall be on their foreheads, no night, no candle, and no sun, for God gives them light, they shall reign forever and ever. God, when he says that lead us not into temptation, it's right from this time, right from our birth, till the end, till we glorify God in the heavens, he's doing it for us. How much more than are we to trust in him for his mercy and for his protection, that he will not lead us into temptation, that he will not lead us to a place where we are tempted and we are sinning. He gives us that much protection. And when we say the next word says, deliver us from evil. What is the evil? You know, we might have, as children, we scare them. We teach them, children, to get scared and of all the evils of the world. A child born does not know much of fear. But we slowly inculcate fear of a million things into a child. But here, what is that evil? Sometimes it's that evil that is there in us. If you read Psalm 139, the last verse, it says, See if there be any wicked way in me, and lead me in the way everlasting. Evil in the others, Psalm 28.3, Do not drag me with the wicked, with those who do evil, who speak cordially with your neighbors, but harbor malice in their hearts. And anything that keeps us from the will of God for us, anything that's evil, and that would be put on the whole armor of God, that he may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil and against all spiritual wickedness in high places. That is the protection that we have. When we say deliver us from evil, it encompasses all the evil that can come sometimes from within our hearts, from others, or when we have to fight against the spiritual wickedness in high places. And he gives us that protection. And all of the sovereignty that he gives us comes from, when we read, uh, it was not there in the, but in some passages in, uh, it said, the Lord says, but deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory. It is because all of his sovereignty, all of his kingdom, everything, his power and everything, we are part of the kingdom people. If we believe that we belong to the kingdom of God and all of this is for us to enjoy and to relish. And what is it that we can do in our daily lives is we can pray. We can start our days with prayer. And every time we say the Lord's Prayer, we do it in schools, we do it like, it's like we, even if we wake up from our sleep, you're going to say the Lord's Prayer. But there is so much there in the Lord's Prayer. Sometimes if our hearts are like so weary and so down, I think the Lord's Prayer might suffice for each one of us. Because there is the protection, there is deliverance, there is power, there is glory, there is food for us, 
all providence, all protection, everything is there in the Lord's Prayer. And it's just that when we start our day, are we looking to God with prayer? And this, when I mention Gregory of Nyssa, he says just this one thought I'll leave before I close. He writes in sometimes around 335 to 395 he lived. So just in the 300s he wrote, people are very busy these days. I mean, like around like 20 centuries ago, almost 19 centuries ago, he says, he says that in present life, everything else is busily pursued. One person fixes his soul on this matter and another on that. But the benefit of prayer is not eagerly sought after. The merchant, the craftsman, the orator, the judge, all of them run not to the place of prayer but to the place of trade. All are possessed by the desire for gain. They try to keep ahead of their neighbor and so the hour of prayer stolen away by intense cares is given over to business. To, for whatever practices a craft, whoever pract practices a craft thinks God's alliance is useless and unprofitable for one's current business. He therefore forsakes prayer, putting all hopes in his own hands and forgetting him who has given us hands. This cuts off the soul's engagement of what is better and heavenly. Greed enters into business. So when we pray, sometimes a child might say, just the Lord's prayer and go out of the house, but we can trust on God's protection for that child for that day, even when we are not there around the child to watch. Even as they grow up, even as they are in some other place for our friends, for our loved ones, that is there for each one of us. And this person writes, it's, he writes beautiful things. He says, it's all, everybody is busy. And he says how prayer needs to take precedence before we begin the day. And how it protects us. He says, what does the prayer do? What does this Lord's prayer can do for us? He says, it gives us prudence. It moderates our temper, restrains vanity, cleanses from rancor, removes envy, destroys injustice, correct, corrupts, corrects impiety, is the strength for the body, prosperity of the household, the good order of the city, the might of the kingdom, the victory in war, the security in peace, the unity of those divided, the constancy of those united. If the Lord's prayer becomes, if we are able to like comprehend all of what God does through the Lord's prayer in our lives, how much more it would be when we step into our offices, if we step into our schools where we work, wherever we go. We are going to be people who carry the kingdom of God wherever we go. We become the mustard tree which grows into a huge plant where birds come, perch and go, might find shelter under us. We become the mustard seeds. And God is able to make that possible for each one of us. And he goes on to even talk up to the end of life how prayer protects us. And if you have to, just one thing that you can take away is if sometimes when you're weary and you're only saying the Lord's Prayer or sometimes just the Psalm 23, I don't know. Sometimes I do that. I don't, like, there are days when I feel I'm, I don't have strength to carry on. I don't have words to pray. What do I pray for? I can be always assured that the Lord's Prayer is an authority for us because the God who created the universe, our Father, is with me. That itself is a comfort and strength and I am there under His sovereignty and I need not worry. I am under His protection, His providence and power. It can be your and mine battle cry, all the battles that we face through. Every day sometimes can be a battle. Might be sometimes our children struggle for something or the other. Our grown-up children or small ones, young ones, old ones, anyone. And when we know not what to fight against or how, this prayer can be your solace, your comfort and strength. And it's also our victory and celebration. We can always say that because for yours is the kingdom, the power and the glory. 
and we are part of it. We are called to be a part of it. And so let us pray that any next time that we say the Lord's Prayer, it's not a repetition of what we have learned right from when we are small, but that it is a prayer of strength and a victory for each one of us. Let us pray. Loving, gracious Father, we thank and praise you for this day, Father Lord. Thank you for bringing us to worship you, to praise you, Father Lord. And Lord, even as we read your word, we thank you because you're a Lord who taught us to pray, Father Lord. You taught us to pray a word, a words which contain all of the Bible in it, Father Lord, all of creation, the goodness of creation in it, Father Lord, because you provide for us. All that you have created is for each and every one of us, Father Lord. You've given us authority and that as a part of creation, we can trust in you for us to give us our daily bread, Father Lord, giving us strength to forgive us those who trespass against us, Father Lord. And we can trust in you because you will not lead us into temptation, Father Lord, and that a many a time you deliver us from evil, Father Lord. And because of all of this, we can call you Abba Father, Father Lord. You have made us your brothers and sisters, heirs, co-heirs, along with you, Father Lord. We thank you so much for it, Father Lord. Let each one of us go out with the strength that you have given us, Father Lord, because you have taught us to say, Our Father. Yes, Lord, we are called to be your children. Heavenly Father, you have sent us your Son who died on the cross for each one of us, Father Lord that we might be part of your kingdom, that we might be a part of the life that you want us to lead, Father Lord, and that your will be done in our lives, Father Lord. Let every family, let every person who has come here go out with a blessing, Father Lord. Go out with a strength because you are with us, Father Lord. Grow out into the week, and through the year and through the years, Father Lord, that your blessings rest upon each one of us, Father Lord. We also commit our loved ones near and far at this time, Father Lord. We pray that your word touches them also, Father Lord, in some way or the other, that we will be the carriers of your word, Father Lord, and that we will proclaim your truth, your love, your wisdom, Father Lord. Be with us through this night, and as we enter into a new week, grant us strength and grace, Father Lord, mercies which are new every morning, that we might dwell in your presence, Father Lord, because you are a Father who leads us in the path of righteousness for your name's sake. It is not by our strength, Father Lord, but because of you, Father Lord, that we are not away from you, Father Lord. Be with us, watch over us, Father Lord. In Christ's most precious name we pray. Amen.